I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us for church today. My name is Derek Robinson. If we haven't met before, it is so good to see you. If we are friends, I can't see you, but I'm glad you are here. Uh, I'm coming to you live from our Columbia campus studio here with my friends in the tech ministry. Whether you're watching online or on YouTube and Facebook, or if you're right here at the Columbia campus with us, I'm so glad that you joined us for church today as we close out this debt-free series with the sermon from Dr. David Anderson. Here at Bridgeway, we are one church in multiple locations. We have shared leadership, same spirit, and unique campus experiences, and our multicultural congregation, which you get to experience today with our choir uh, leading us in worship. Our mission here is to build bridges, build into one another as we build bridges into our community. If you guys are watching online, why don't you uh, send a shout out, send a praise report. I don't even have to look and I already know that OB, Tina, Sheila, all you guys are probably already in the YouTube chat. Uh, so I'm glad that you guys are here. If you're here in person, why don't you turn to a neighbor, the person behind you in front of you and just say, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You know, we're here to build community, not just to watch me on a screen. So uh, why don't you guys uh, pop in the chat on YouTube and Facebook and just greet each other for one second here in person. Let us know where you're watching from if you're online. Like I said, I'm here in Columbia, Maryland, but we got people all over the world joining us online on these services. So we are so glad to hear that you're here. For uh, those parents that are watching online, if you guys have kids, grab a device for your child, uh, preschool through fifth grade. We have services that are made just for them. If you go to bridgeway.cc slash kids, grab an iPad, grab a phone, laptop, I don't know, whatever you need to do to uh, watch this special service made just for your child. But if you're a parent joining us here in person at the Columbia campus, why don't you take your kid to Bridge Kids? We have an awesome volunteer team that is ready to build into them and teach them right here at Columbia. You can check in uh, with that team right there in the lobby. Uh, I'm going to get into a couple announcements before we jump in here. Um, <clears throat> for everything that I talk about, you can learn more at bridgeway.cc slash events or download the Church Center app, which I'll tell you more about in just a second. So first up we have, oh, for all the golfers in the house, I'm not a golfer, I actually got a trophy for world's worst golfer the one time I played, so I probably will not be joining this tournament, but you should come join us at Pine Ridge Golf Course for a golf tournament that we have coming up in July. It's not just a tournament, it's a great opportunity to build community uh, with each other here at Bridgeway and also people in our uh, local community in Howard County and beyond. So invite your Franks, those are your friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, and their kids, it's a uh, term we have here at Bridgeway. Invite your Franks to this golf tournament. And all the registration info, cost, all that stuff is at bridgeway.cc slash events or bridgeway.cc slash golf. If you want to send a link right to some friends that you know would be interested, uh, just send them bridgeway.cc slash golf. Next up is the Mother's and Father's Day baby dedications. Here at Bridgeway, we don't baptize babies, uh, but we do dedicate them to the Lord. So. Um, we do those on Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Labor Day. That's a joke. If you don't get it, ask your neighbor. But Mother's and Father's Day is coming up quickly. Uh, so just a heads up, uh, we have a bunch of classes that you uh, that are going to be offered, whether here in Columbia or online. Uh, you have to do a class before you can have your baby dedicated. So go to bridgeo.cc slash events to learn more about those baby dedication classes. And the last thing I want to tell you guys about is the Church Center app. Uh, if you guys are new here or maybe you've been around for a while and you're like, I just don't know where to find this like specific thing, the Church Center app is the home for everything you need to know here at Bridgeway. I think the QR code is right here. I'm looking at the camera so I can't see it, but I think it's right here. Uh, so the Church Center app is where you go for events. It's where you go for groups. There's like a group chat function that I love to use for uh, my worship ministry team members. Uh, it's a great great tool. Uh, our video library, once the service ends right here, uh, you can check out the video library. Like I said, those services that are made just for kids, all of it is on the Church Center app, so make sure to download that. You can find it in the App Store on your Apple phone, Samsung phone, some other phone that I don't know the name of. All of them have uh, the Church Center app, and all you got to do is pop in your phone number, and you can get logged in. So before we start service, let me see who's in the chat. Oh, we got Zell, my dude Zell. Shout out. He's one of the, the team members on my uh, student ministries worship team. So glad to see you here. Uh, Pastor Gary is with you in the chat today. He is your online clergy. So make sure to give a shout out to Pastor Gary. Man, I see a lot of names. We got uh, Margaret Mary. Larry Mickens is in the chat with us. Boom. Jerry McCannon, so glad you're here. Uh, welcome to all of you watching online. Uh, let's go ahead and pray as we get ready to launch this service. Lord God, thank you so much for uh, this day. Thank you for the community that we get to build here at Bridgeway. We're grateful that we get to be in your presence, Lord, as we give you all of our worship today. Uh, we just give you all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, God. Uh, it's all for you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get ready to worship Bridgeway. Choir, you're up next. <laughs> Bridge 
way. Come home to church. No judgment, no questions asked. Just welcome.
a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed this victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross was made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens rolled? All hail King Jesus! All hail, All hail to the Lord! the 
Savior of the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you that you sent your son to die for us and that he rose again and that we have an opportunity to have eternal life with you. God, we thank you. We honor you. We're grateful for every opportunity that we get to worship. Father God, I ask that you would bless the rest of this service, Father, that you would open our hearts to receive and our minds to be able and be attentive to the word of God. We thank you in advance for all that you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Before you have your seats, could you turn to somebody and say, it's so good to see you. If you're watching online, it's good to be with you as well. Continue to worship. to know that we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and that he reigns forever and ever and ever and he is steadfastly on the throne and he is coming back again. Are you excited church? Hallelujah. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Pastor David is going to be concluding his sermon series debt free. Have you been blessed so far? by this sermon series, praise the Lord. And today's message is called Harvest Time. Are you ready for the harvest time? All right, well, before we get started and we transition our worship and continue our worship in a time of giving, I wanna talk about a verse of scripture. You know, scripture talks about us going out and fulfilling the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. But that requires some things and what we call in project management enabling features. Um, and one of those things is how we finance the work of God. Do you know scripture talks about that? How we finance the word of God? Well, I'm going to share a verse of scripture with you that comes out of 2 Corinthians uh, it comes out of chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses 6 through 15. And here is what the word of the Lord says. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he supply, who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Think of this is how your offering is dispersed. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. And for your generosity and sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Isn't it amazing? Yes. Praise the Lord. And so as we move into a time of giving, I want you to reflect on this. We don't want you to give out of compulsion. We don't want you to be giving to check a box or out of a sense of requirement, but to give cheerfully, as scripture just said, 
What you give to Bridgeway goes out to impact the church, uh, being the hands and feet of Jesus, both locally and abroad. So when you give, you can go to bridgeway.cc forward slash give. You can also put your offering in one of the various offering boxes as you're leaving. But your giving impacts the mission that God has given us worldwide. And today I want to talk to you about a very special missionary uh, who is serving in the world today, who is a part of Bridgeway, a part of our Bridgeway student ministries. And her name is Dana Argetta. Um, she grew up at Bridgeway and now she is serving abroad. And your offering has aided abundantly in her being able to do the work of the Lord. In fact, let's hear from Dana right now. Hello, Bridgeway. My name is Dana Robinson Argetta, and I have served as a Teach Beyond missionary in Honduras since 2018. I've been connected to Bridgeway since high school, and I know I always have a church home to visit when I'm back in the United States. Here at the Spanish Institute of Honduras, my roles are administration and student care, working to prepare missionaries for the mission field by providing quality language and cultural training, uh, as well as spiritual support as they transition to their ministries all throughout Honduras. Thank you for helping me help others through your prayers and through your support. I could not be here without the backing of a team. Gracias por su apoyo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray over the offering. Let's pray over Dana and her ministry, and let's pray for the message. Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given Lord, everything belongs to you. And so we thank you, Lord, that um, you, you bless us with so much and only ask for a portion back. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, uh, for the cheerful giver who is here today, Lord, uh, that will be giving to further the work of advancing your kingdom. And, Lord, also for that person who has the heart to give, but maybe uh, they, they don't have the resources, Lord. Uh, we pray that you will just comfort uh, their hearts and knowing that you see them and you know their hearts. And Lord, we pray over Dana and the ministry that you have blessed her with, Lord, that she will continue to be a great disciple maker where you have placed her. And we pray for the message, Lord. We pray that the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and rule, and that we will be blessed and edified and challenged and compelled. And we thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Start passing the baton while you're still living. Have you ever seen one, felt one, touched one? Well, clearly I haven't because I never ran track. Okay, so through the analogy, I understand it. But through the reality, it's something different. So the goal is to pass the baton from one person to the other without getting disqualified, which means not throwing it, dropping it, and making sure that you do it within what's called the exchange zone. So the handoff is really important. The handoff is crucial. The timing of it is important. Okay, so if you're not ready, if you're uh, chilling out, and right. I'm running this direction, Correct. you're the younger generation, Correct. but you're really not ready to receive it, right. then you're gonna miss the handoff. Correct. So it's on my end, as I see you approaching, what is your pace? If you're coming in strong, I need to get to your pace. So that means I need to get up to your level. If it looks like you're tired and you're burnt out, and yeah. it's all day. I might take it a little slow. Okay. But, so the younger, the next generation then has to slow down so I'm in order to get what they need to get from the other generation. Correct. If they see that the other generation is not moving as fast. You got it. Correct. Okay. I'm adjusting to you. You're adjusting to me. I'm adjusting Because to you. you want what I have. Correct. So you can take it further than I've taken it. There you go. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> praise the Lord, Bridgeway. I said, praise the Lord, Bridgeway. Now, one more time for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, Bridgeway. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord and... You have heard that we are in the final installment of a three-week series called Debt Free. We first talked about flourishing two weeks ago from Psalm 92, and that was our uh, celebration for the mortgage shredding of 
are building here in Columbia, Maryland, a 30-year mortgage paid in 15 years. So put your hands together for that just to say, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. And I thank you for your faithfulness, Bridgeway. And then last week, the second message in the three-week series was on legacy, where we talked about passing on the baton from one generation to the next, especially financially. Today's message is harvest time, and I'm going to be centering the message from the passage that uh, Pastor uh, read earlier on 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So I'm going to get there, and we're going to give a message from there. And toward the end, during the practical applications, I'm going to invite uh, Kevin Turpin II, one of our Bridgeway partners and Bible teachers and friend, to kind of come up and interact with me with regard to the practical applications that you can take with you. Now, before I get started, I've asked Pastor David Heiliger if he would just grab a microphone and come up and pray for today's message that uh, as we interact with the scripture, that uh, it would be something that would feed your heart and feed your soul. And so, Pastor David, would you please cover us now uh, for the message? Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Father, we're so thankful that in this moment, as we reflect on the harvest, we know that you've been the one who've, who's been preparing the land for the harvest. Lord, in our own lives, in our own hearts, and in, in everything we touch, Lord, you have been the one preparing. So, Father, I pray that we would listen to your spirit, we'd be open to your word, and, Father, you would bless our pastor as he brings the message. Father, we're looking for your transformation over all all else, to be close to you and transformed by you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And amen. Thank you, Pastor David Heiliger. Now, I received a letter last week after the sermon that we gave on legacy and debt free. And in this letter, you will see that it was a woman's harvest time for sure in this congregation. The author of the letter wanted to give glory to God with her testimony. This is what she wrote. Dear Pastor Anderson, last week, April 7th, 2024, I felt privileged to witness our church's mortgage shredding celebration as we gave thanks to God for completing our 30-year mortgage in only 15 years. Praise the Lord. My joy became full to overflowing when you asked the whole congregation to press in and ask God to help us be debt-free in our personal lives as well. I prayed in faith, believing that the Lord is more than able to free me from my various debts. I am extremely happy to share with you that two days later, on Tuesday, April the 9th, 2024, I opened my email and was ever so pleasantly blessed with a surprise good news mail from the U.S. Department of Education, informing me that one of my two parent loans has been paid in full. Praise God. The sum of $30,000 has been canceled. Wow. As a single parent and now a retiree, I have been struggling with the loan company to find a reasonable payment plan, but seemingly getting nowhere. I don't have enough words to express my gratitude to God for allowing me to be considered a recipient of this student loan forgiveness. Sincerely, Omalara Salaru, a Bridgeway partner. Praise the Lord. Like I said two weeks ago, and I'm going to declare it again, debt-free is your destiny. Debt-free is your destiny. And this woman's debt of $30,000 was dropped and forgiven just two days later after the sermon. Now, how many of you know that that email came in at just the right time? I mean, the decision of the government may have been weeks before, if not months before, but that Tuesday was her harvest time. You see, your harvest time is coming. God is already working 
on what he's working on. You just haven't seen it manifested yet. It's important to understand, friends, that God is counting on you to express your faith to believe that your harvest time is coming. So can I just say it to you at the Owens Mills campus? Your harvest time is coming. Can I just say it to you in Columbia? Your harvest time is coming. Can I say it to you all around the world, whether you're in Hilton Head, South Carolina, or whether you're in Miami, Florida, or whether you are in Myanmar, your harvest time is coming. Hold on. Your Tuesday is on the way. Will you have bold enough faith to believe before you receive it? You see, the space in between seed time when you're sowing and harvest time when you're reaping is that space in between where you must exercise faith, be steadfast in your faithfulness, and remain patient as you persevere toward your harvest time. And speaking of harvest time, this is the passage that I want to take you to. So I told you earlier, we're coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So if you have a copy of the scriptures, a smartphone, a way to get to the scriptures, wherever you are, in your kitchen or in your car, I want you to go with me there. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'll be reading from the New International Version, 1984. And this passage really highlights the generosity of God's people to advance the kingdom work that God has through the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was talking to the Corinthians because they were preparing a financial gift that would help the believers in Jerusalem who are really struggling financially. And so Paul's writing this letter to interact with them about the gift that they were going to give. And these people were coming uh, in relationship with Paul to say, listen, we want to partner with you in advancing the kingdom of God. So let's start with verse 1 through 7, and sort of my three-point outline, the first part is the heart of generosity, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 7, the heart of generosity. And what I want you to do as I read it, I want you to observe the emotional words that you see in the passage describing the giving that Paul is talking about. Let's pick it up in verse 1. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the saints, for I know your eagerness to help. And I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. So he's going to send ahead some brothers to work with them. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of of having been so confident. Verse 5, so I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Verse 6, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give, not reluctantly, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let's stop there. This section is talking to us about the heart of generosity. And did you notice the emotional words that were were written to describe the generous heart? There were four positive emotional words and four negative emotional words. In verse 2, you have eager. In verse 2 and 3, you had ready or, or prepared. In verse 2, you had enthusiasm. In verse 6, you had the word cheerful, four positive emotional words to describe this generous giving. But there were also four negative emotional words, if you will. In verse 4, unprepared. In verse 5, grudgingly. 
In verse 7, reluctantly. In verse 7, under compulsion. You see, notice that God's desire is for the heart to be right and for you to be happy about giving, not just a gut-wrenching obedience out of compulsion and guilt and shame. That's not the kind of offering that God wants. So let's ask you this question. What category of words most reflect your heart right now as it relates to giving generously to the work of the Lord? Let me ask it again. What category of words reflect your heart right now as it relates to generously giving to the work of God? The first category of positive emotions, eager, ready, enthusiastic, cheerful. Or the second category, unprepared, grudgingly, reluctantly, under compulsion. If any words from the second category describe you, then stop giving. Now, it may be hard to hear a pastor actually say that. you probably never heard that before, have you? <laughs> Seriously, though, stop giving. Because there are some areas of prayer that you need to focus on so God can work on your heart. And that's okay. You will know when your heart is changing, when you start seeing the negative category fade away and the positive category of generosity starting to flood your soul. Ladies, you'll understand this. If you and your man get in an argument about him not being romantic enough, and then he, he, he says, well, what do you want? And, and, and tell me what you want. And maybe you'll respond with words like that old song, you don't bring me flowers anymore. <laughs> and so a couple days goes by, and he brings you flowers, and then he throws them on the table and says, here, take the flowers. Are you happy now? <laughs> well, gentlemen, what do you think? Ladies, what do you think? Does this engender that warm and romantic and loving feeling that you were wanting? <laughs> of course not. And you know what? Some of you ladies, you pick up those flowers and throw it right back at them, wouldn't you? <laughs> but how many of us do that with God when it comes to giving? We, we throw flowers of a tithe. We throw flowers of an offering. Here, God, you want it? Here, take it. Pull it out of my wife. Here, you can have it. The preacher says it. I don't like it. I'm stressed. I'm angry. I'm unprepared. I'm reluctant. But if you want that because you want my obedience, fine. Take it, God. Do you actually think that God wants that kind of offering? Does he need the money? Does she need the flowers? <laughs> Someone said, Pastor, if you would have said diamonds, it'd be a different story. But <laughs> flowers, I don't need it. <laughs> diamonds, I'm not going to throw it back. But anyway, you get the point that I'm making. Grudgingly, under compulsion, out of guilt, maybe even out of anger, I have one word for you. Stop. In the name of love, before you break his heart. Thank you, oh, oh. God is saying, don't, don't give it to me like that. When you give, it should be because you want to. It should be because you get to. It should be because of gratitude in your heart. The heart of generosity should be filled then with Eagerness, readiness, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and cheerfulness. This is the heart of generosity. Now let's move to the second point of the outline, and we'll pick it up at verse 8. 
So we looked at verses 1 through 7, the heart of generosity. In verse 8, I want you to see the wholeness of generosity. Check out what it says in verse 8. And God is about to make, listen, all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Wow. Can I read that again? And God is about to make all grace. How much grace? All. Abound to you so that in all things. How many things? All. All. At all times. How many times? All. All times. Having all that you need. Having some of what you need? No. All. You will abound in every good work. And, and how many good works? Yeah. Every good work. Did you see that the word all was mentioned four times? Now, in the Greek, the word all means all. <laughs> God wants to bless you wholly, wholeheartedly, in all ways. Fully. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. James says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of lights. He wants you to see his abundance in all areas of your life, all things, all times, in every way. And you might be saying, but Pastor, I, I received that. I want to receive that. I'm vibing with that. But when? When will my all fall on me? I want to hold on to it, but, but I'm not seeing it right now. Which then leads us really to the, third, to the third point of the outline. You see, it's not just the heart of generosity in verses 1 through 7. It's not just the wholeness of generosity in verse 8. But it's also telling us we've got to wait for the harvest of generosity in verses 9 through 12. In other words, it's coming. Either in this life and or in the life to come, it's coming. So let's look at the harvest of generosity for verses 9 through 12. I'll pick it up at verse 9. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. This is a quotation from Psalm 112. In verse 10, now he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11, you will be made rich in, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Last verse we'll read is verse 12. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. He says that God will increase the store of your seed. And God will enlarge your harvest of righteousness. Did you notice the word will? Four times, all, four times, will, four times. For positive emotions, then you get all, then God will. For positive emotions, then you get all, then God will. And it, when you notice the word will, I mean, he, he says it over and over and over again. He will also supply. Increase the store of your seed. He will enlarge your harvest. You will be made rich in every way. Your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Will, 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 will. That's a promise. You have to hold on to these promises and be righteous along the way to the very end. Your harvest is coming. Bridgeway, your Tuesday is coming. Your increase is on the way. Your harvest is enlarging even as we speak. And you know, increase simply means that God is going to give you more so that you can do more for his kingdom. 
Enlarging means that God will grow your righteousness through your increase. Another way of putting it is God will bless you to be a blessing to others. God will bless you to be a blessing to others. How many of you have seen this principle in your life? That God blesses you to bless other people, and then when you bless others, you are even more blessed. Has anybody ever been a witness to that? I bless others, then God blesses me, then I bless others, then God blesses me more, then I bless others, then God blesses me more, and then God blesses me more, and then God blesses me more so I can bless others and advance the kingdom of God. You just can't seem to beat God's given no matter how hard you try. Anybody a witness to that? As your generous heart begins to grow, you will begin to understand what is meant by it is better to give than to receive. What have we talked about so far? We've talked about the harvest of generosity, verses 1 through 7. The wholeness of generosity in verse 8. And the harvest of generosity in verses 9 through 12. What I want to do now is I'm going to call Kevin Turpin up. Kevin Turpin a second, one of our Bible teachers. We've had a relationship for many years, and we've had a mentor-mentee relationship for about four or five years, uh, especially throughout COVID, and we've been doing a lot of stuff together, and you've heard him teach so wonderfully uh, on the stage. And so why don't you put your hands together for Kevin Turpin the second. Hey, my brother. Man, it's Thanks good to see me. you. You know, he's also in our um, mentoring uh, ministry training track program, but Kevin is a, is a businessman, he's a president of a company, and just tell us, for those who might not know quickly, you're the president of what company? National Journal Group. It's uh, based in Washington, D.C. It's a research firm and also uh, a media company, so uh, yeah. we do a little bit of everything. Yeah, you've done such a great job in preaching, and I know next week uh, we're going to have uh, Pastor Eli here on the stage, and you're going to be at Owens Mills talking about persevering. And um, as you've gone through the different messages, and we've been able to talk through messages, we've been able to talk about a lot of things. And the three applications have to do with these three broader categories of, of others, of overflow, and of opening our heart. So let's talk about others for a second, because we, we do a lot in this area. But when we talk about others, tell me what you think when we think about generosity and, and somehow reaching out to others. And let me tell people the first practical application. Partner with others in expressing generosity. So don't just be generous yourself. That's good. But partner with others in expressing generosity. Yeah, I, I think this doing it with someone else, it, it just increases the blessing of it, right? That I, I, I always tell Dr. Anderson, it's so much more fun being generous with someone else yeah. and partnering with you uh, and also having a prayer partnership around it, right? Yeah. And being able to partner in prayer and then seeing how the spirit works. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one thing just to be generous, right? And, and I do that and we probably all give to charities or, or favorite causes that we care about. But it's a whole other thing to partner with someone in prayer uh, and, and ask God to help you to be generous to others, help to really live out uh, what, the way he would want us to be living, and then to see how he works yeah. uh, and see how he works through both vessels, right? I mean, there, there's many times where, you know, I'll wake up. And, and feel God speaking to me and, and, and give me a very, very specific situation. Uh, and I feel compelled to be generous. And I'll send a text to Dr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, he would have just had a conversation with someone in that exact situation. Yeah, somebody who might have <laughs> needed a financial blessing. Yeah. And then we'd partner together. And in a sense, a conspiracy of generosity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and the conspiracy of it is, it's just, it's based on the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit would know that this person had a need, and then it's a privilege for the Holy Spirit to use our partnership to get that blessing to that person. We found it with other people as well, but no one knew that other people were feeling the same kind of leadings you were feeling, and then they would co contact me, and, it, and somebody would be blessed. And so we thought, I think it was during the COVID year, I can't remember, yeah. or shortly thereafter, I decided that, you know what, maybe it's a good idea to pull some of these people together. And so we would have a group of about 12 to 14 people that would meet privately on Zoom to, to continue to have this spirit-led generosity. Yeah. All, all about generosity too, right? We, we specifically gathered to be generous to other people. And, you know, I, I, we didn't count 
how much money or all the things that we did. I tried uh, the deer, and after that, I, I, I lost yeah. track too, yeah. right? And I guess we're living the word that you yeah. shouldn't, your left hand shouldn't know what your right hand is exactly. doing. But, but we, uh, we just purely wanted to bless God's people. Yeah. And then the stories that came out of it, yeah. uh, that, that God would show up in people's lives uh, at the very time they needed it, yeah. uh, is, is just still a blessing to me to this day. It was uh, an anonymous giving often, and people wouldn't know who the giver was or who the givers were or whatever. But that conspiracy of generosity, it let people know that God actually actually saw them. Exactly right. You know, and, and this, has happened, this has happened in our congregation as well. I mean, uh, this is amazing when I think about uh, what you have done as a congregation when you've even blessed people at the, at the front of the stage. You know, and one of our newest employees, is a, it's a trip that he's here, and he doesn't know I'm going to call on him. But I just want you to walk forward. Since I see you in the house, you probably didn't, hanging in the back. But I want you to walk forward, and this is not to embarrass you, but he's giving God the glory, and it's the only reason I'm doing this right now. But does anybody remember this man, Oliver? You may remember him. You may not remember him. But Oliver, I got, God led me to call him out of the middle of the congregation and come forward. When I said, if you wanted to give, but your heart wants to give, but you didn't have the resources to give, you remember that? And I called him to the front, and then all of you, talk about partnering with generous people. This congregation right here, you all came up. And you remember they blessed you so much, with so much, with so much money, this guy couldn't carry it. He couldn't carry it, and then he fell down to his knees because he was overwhelmed, because God was saying, I see you out of a big old crowd of people, I see you. Now, I didn't know what God was doing, but something none of us knew, only Oliver knew. And David Heiliger told me about this afterwards. But David, just come up here really quickly. I want David to tell the story uh, because this is, a, this is actually amazing. So here's Oliver down on his knees crying. All of y'all are being generous, right? He didn't, have, he didn't have anything to give, but his heart wanted to give. Right? And so all of that happened. Security took him out of here, so none of y'all rob him. <laughs> you know, you weren't always saved. <laughs> all right, anyway. So, so, David, you came back and showed me a picture. I was blown away after the service. Yeah, Mr. Oliver uh, and I walked back to the green room, and uh, the security team is counting the money. Can you imagine this big basket full of money, and they're counting the money? And Oliver, Mr. Oliver, is sitting there, and he unzips his jacket and pulls out. Mr. Oliver, what was it? It was his eviction notice. He brought it with him to church. What are you doing with your eviction notice in your pocket? Uh, and, and as they're counting out the money, the one thing that Mr. Oliver keeps saying over and over and over again, because I said, I wonder how much is here. I wanted to know the number. He said, it doesn't matter. He said, God sees me. God sees me. Amazing. Amazing. And Oliver, I know you weren't uh, thinking you were going to be speaking today, but that's how the Holy Spirit works. And so what you don't know is just a couple of weeks later, we had an opening at the church. So a man that could not pay his rent or mortgage, about to get evicted, got enough money to pay over three months. Amen. And then the craziest thing happened. We had an opening. Now Oliver has a job full time right here at Bridgeway. <laughs> All right, Oliver, say something. I don't care what you say. Well, I mean, I do care what you say, but. I just want to say thank you. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Bridgeway. Thank you, family. Thank you for your openness to what God wants to do in your life, for you to see the needs of others and be able to bless them at their lowest point. And thank you. That's all I can say, Pastor. Amen. Let's give God the glory. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. All right. Okay. So none of that was scripted, and the camera people at, uh, are going crazy. But o Owens Mills, uh, y'all had your own blessings a couple of weeks ago as well. And maybe you'll see Oliver 
Oliver around. We did a podcast called Grace Economics. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll move to the other two practical applications. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We uh, did a podcast where we just shared some of our, our generosity stories. I believe there are six episodes, uh, and I, it was a real blessing to me just getting the stories out. I, yeah. I remember us being on the podcast and then remembering stories that we forgot, and yeah. the Holy Spirit would move on the podcast. Uh, so uh, you could find it on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you listen to podcasts, but uh, certainly could give you practical ways to think about uh, how can I be generous in this everyday life. Yeah, and partner with others doing it. And David Heiliger was in that podcast to kind of keep us on track. The second area, that one was about others. Partner with others to express generosity. The second one's about overflow. Use your overflow to be a blessing. What, what do we mean by that when we're looking at 2 Corinthians, and especially in verse 11? Right, right. you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 11. And I, w- I love this verse. It's one of my life verses. Uh, and w- where I circled it in my Bible uh, is it says 911, right? So what, what do we think of when we call 911? We're calling for first responders. Right. We're in help. We're in need. But then when you think about that scripture, well, what to say? He, he, he will enrich you in every way so you can be generous on every occasion. And then the second part of the verse is through your generosity that, that people uh, will thank God because you're generous. Right. So, uh, it, how I think about that is, well, we're supposed to be kingdom first responders. And that verse is actually giving us a charge that when, when you have a heart of generosity, a heart to give your overflow and let the, it flow to others, that God then is using you as a, a kingdom first responder, right? So Oliver, uh, he needed kingdom first responders yeah. and we showed up for him. That was a 911 that moment. That was a 911 moment. He was in crisis. And then God enriched people within the congregation to have overflow to give to Oliver, right? If, if you needed that money to pay your rent, you weren't going to be able to give that to Oliver. But, but people had overflow and were able to flow that to him. And then he was praising God. So that's how it works. And when we think about overflow, the overflow is always for other people. Right. Mm. And, and that's uh, what we have to think about with our hearts. We have to have a heart for generosity. Right. Uh, one of one of the scriptures that we think about is Malachi 310. Right. Uh, in God's promise, when we bring the tithes to the storehouse, is that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we won't what? Have room enough to store. Right. But sometimes we make the mistake of saying, OK, I need to try to store it. I want to make my territory bigger to try to store it. That is not the purpose of it. The purpose is for us to be overflowed to the point where our overflow is being used to build the kingdom of God. Yeah, and blessing other people. And it may not always be overflow of money. I mean, I think it's important uh, with regard to resources, but we can have overflow in different areas of life, right? Absolutely. Go back to that verse, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 9-11. It says, he will enrich you in every way. And when you look up the Greek, the every there is talking about every detail. So that's not only just your bank account, that's your health, that's your joy, uh, that's your, what, what your refrigerator looks like. Uh, when you sit down for a meal, do you have leftovers? And when we're thinking about being generous, God wants us to use everything that mm-hmm. he's given us to bless other people. So maybe you have leftovers every night. Why don't, you, why don't you think about, maybe I'll share those leftovers with the neighbor down the street that I think is struggling. Uh, maybe you're just in a season of happiness and joy. Share that. Share that happiness and joy. Someone needs that at work. Right. Right? Right, yeah. So th- those are just practical ways. That God is enriching you in every way. That is not just money. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. So that's our second practical application. Partner with others in expressing generosity. And secondly, use your overflow to be a blessing. Here's a third and final one, Kevin, uh, with regard to the category of open your heart. Uh, And here's the practical application. Trust God with your tithing by faith. You know, we're talking about being debt free, and now we're talking about generosity and harvest time. Like, how do those things connect? Right. Well, I, I think tithing, generosity has to start with tithing, hmm. right? That uh, God is uh, g- the most generous uh, uh, thing that has ever existed, right? God himself came down and he gave his son 
uh, to cover our sins. And it doesn't stop there. He makes sure that uh, he clothes us and we have food, etc. But bringing the tithe into the storehouse uh, is where we start exercising our generosity through faith yeah. and through trust and through obedience. What we're saying is, God, none of this is, is mine. It's all yours. And I'm recognizing that. So when we're thinking about generosity, we're thinking about harvest, it has to start first with recognizing where harvest comes from. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your tithe story, because you actually have a, a story with regard to that, you and your wife, Tiff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it, it's one of the, 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 the inflection points in both my wife and I's life, uh, where we got married when we were 23. Uh, I believe we may have been 24, 25. It was very early. We were coming to Bridgeway. Uh, and uh, Dr. Anderson was teaching on tithing. Uh, and he was teaching on uh, tithing between your net and your gross. And I believe you said, do you want God to bless you on your net or on your gross? Uh, but, but my wife and I, we both were raised to tithe. I believe last week in your sermon, you were talking about things that you can pass down. Right. Both, both of our parents uh, uh, taught us to tithe. So we, we came into our marriage knowing that we were going to give a tithe to God, but we tithed on our net, right? We're early in our marriage. Uh, God blessed us to be able to, to, to buy a house. Uh, 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 and we, we were just making it, you know, every week. Uh, and we weren't in lack, right? We were provided for, but we didn't have a lot of overflow. Uh, and I remember us driving home after the sermon and we looked at each other and we said, you know, let's start tithing on our gross. And it wasn't to, to get into some scheme with God, right? And that God looks at our heart. It wasn't, oh, we, we want a new car. So we're going to start tithing on our gross. Right. It was, we wanted to be obedient to God. And what Dr. Anderson pricked in us was, oh, is there, is there another way that we can please God's heart? Let's start tithing on our gross. The next week, we started doing it. Since we made that decision, so that was a small step. We were already tithing. And how many years ago was that? Do you remember? This was 15 years ago. Wow. Uh, so I was preaching good back then? Yeah. Okay, you were preaching good, good back to... then. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure. Go ahead, man. I'm so, so, we, so we made that decision. Church, since we made that decision, uh, the income combined that we were bringing in, God has increased it 11-fold at this point. We've increased every single year since then. So we always make more than we made the year before. So that, and that was a small step, mm. right? That was a small step. But the step was our heart. It was our heart yeah. saying we want to please God. And generosity starts with pleasing God. Being generous yeah. is pleasing to God. Uh, you know, in Matthew 25, uh, Jesus says in the parable of the sheep and the goats, yeah. he says, when you saw, when, when I was hungry, you fed me. Yeah. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Yeah. You know, it, it, and then he, he does the flip side of saying uh, at the end of that, when he's talking to the goats, when, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. So what, what Jesus is teaching us is that he will overflow us, but that overflow and that blessing is always to flow to other people. He wants to use us. He wants to partner with us to bless other people. Yeah, yeah. And so as we think about today's message, the heart of generosity, the wholeness uh, of, of generosity, and then the harvest where you just have to wait and expect in faith uh, for your Tuesday to come. You know, that Tuesday was on a Sunday here for Oliver. And, and for many of you, you have stories of how God has blessed you because of giving of your, of your first fruits. I want you to know God is pleased with you there. I have a brother now. He, he, uh, he's, in, he's in the congregation now. I won't identify him. But a couple of weeks ago, he goes, God just told me to go get, go get some money from the ATM because you never know what God's going to do at church on Sunday. And so he, he just started bringing cash. You know, maybe some of y'all are that way now because you just never, never know. So, I, Lord, I want to be prepared, right? And so I think he got 400 bucks uh, and he had put it in his pocket. And I didn't do anything in that service. But he was greeting someone at the door. And somehow he got in a conversation with the person at the door and ended up giving them 100 bucks because they were looking for the community cupboard. Which way is the community cupboard? And he's like, well, you go out here and go around uh, to the awning. And he goes, you know what? Here, here's, a, here's 100 bucks. And he blessed the person with the hundred bucks. The person was evidently very grateful, uh, and and then and then my friend decided, you know what? Let me give you all four hundred bucks. 
And so they went away with $400 in cash from somebody that they didn't know, and then around the back, they go get the, they'll get, go get the groceries. What am I saying? I'm saying that this church is filled with people like that. Filled with generosity is not just from the pastor or a Bible teacher, but it's just every day people are trying to please God. And whether it's $400 or whether it's leftover food in the fridge to give to a neighbor, it's the heart that God wants us to have, isn't it? It's always the heart. That's God's always looking at our heart. Well, the way that uh, we want to end the message today, instead of a prayer, we want to read a blessing over you. Uh, In 2 Corinthians 9, in verse 9, the Apostle Paul in the letter quotes from Psalm 112. So why is he quoting from Psalm 112? He's quoting from Psalm 112 to pull it from the Old Testament to the New to let us know that when we live righteous, God will bless us with with the resources that we have when we steward them in a godly way. And so it's just nine verses that we're going to read, the first nine verses. And I asked Kevin to read the first four, and then I'll read the last five. But as we read it, I want you to hear it as a blessing over your life. And then when we're done, we'll say amen and amen, and we'll walk off. But I want you to receive it. So maybe what you can do, if, if you don't mind, is just turn your hands up to the up to the heavens, and it's as if this word is falling on you now. Go ahead, Kevin. Starting at verse 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who finds great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the Mm, land. Yes. The generation of the upright will be Blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in dark even in darkness, light dawns for the upright. Mm. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Mm. And continuing on. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Thank you, Jesus. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. Thank you, Lord. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn or dignity will be lifted high in honor. Do you receive that? Amen, 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 and amen. God bless you, Bridgeway. Remember, remember that debt free is your what? Your destiny. God bless you, Bridgeway. Debt free is your destiny. Thank you, Dr. Anderson, Pastor Heiliger, Kevin. Thank you guys for that word. Thank you, Oliver, for coming up and sharing your story. I'm so glad that you're a part of our team here at Bridgeway, that you're on uh, the employee team with us. Just a, just a powerful service, powerful series. Uh, if you guys want to watch that back, obviously, Um, you are in the right spot. You're online with us. So just go to our YouTube channel and you can watch that whole series. Again, next week, we're going to hear a word right here online from Pastor Eli Hernandez. But if you want to hear from Kevin, uh, maybe come out to our Owings Mills Reisterstown campus. He'll be giving the word there. But, uh, you know, you guys online are always welcome to keep watching online uh, or come join us in Columbia or Owings Mills Reisterstown. If you invited Jesus into your life today, or maybe you want to know more about what that even means, what does it mean to invite Jesus into your life? If you have questions, you want to just talk to someone, we have a person on the other end of the line at 97,000. If you just text the word Bridgeway, we'll get in touch with you. We'll encourage you, let you know more about what it means to be on this faith journey with Jesus. So just text the word Bridgeway to 97,000. 
Uh, if this was your first time with us, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us online uh, on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we invite you to go to our website. Bridgeway.cc is the website. There's a new here tab right there where you can get plugged in, uh, learn more about our service times, events, groups, all that stuff. Or like I said earlier uh, in the pre-show, download the Church Center app. That is the spot to get connected to uh, our ministries, our groups, all of that stuff here at Bridgeway. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say a quick prayer for the offering. You can go to bridgeway.cc slash give uh, if you would like to be part of this faith journey and, and gives your tithes and offerings uh, to Jesus through Bridgeway. Uh, we appreciate it. We don't take that lightly, and uh, we will steward your funds uh, towards the, the kingdom, towards our mission and vision uh, to reach our community, culture, and world. So let me go ahead and pray for that offering right now. Lord, we got, Lord God, we thank you that that debt-free is our destiny, God. We we take in this word uh, from our leadership, God, the word that you have placed in their hearts and in their hands, God. We we receive that, and we pray that over our over our lives, over our families, uh, over our future. That uh, we know that when we give our best and our first to you, that you will do great things with it, more than we can imagine. Thank you, Lord. In your name, we pray. Amen. All right, I just want to invite you guys to come back here next week. We're here live uh, five minutes before the service every single week. I'm just talking to you guys online, but you can also come early to our Columbia campus and our Owings Mills Reisterstown campus here in Maryland. Uh, but we do the pre-service. We talk to you live online. I see so many people. I see Aaron. I see Tina, Brian, Carolyn, Avis, so many people here in the YouTube chat and on Facebook. I'm so glad that you guys joined us. Uh, before we go, I'm just going to uh, read the first verse from that uh, scripture that they read from Psalm. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Thanks, Bridgeway. I'll see you next week.